So I got this with an old three-phase motor. This is what's called, called in the industry. I believe it's called a, mode, a starter or a motor starter. It's kind of, think of it like a relay with a few more features. Usually these are found like big commercial things, like three-phase setups. This is a three-phase starter or contactor. It's got a reset button in this particular unit. It has a start and a stop here. It's got a schematic inside. I, I couldn't quite figure that out. They had a few things, but nothing seemed to correlate with the buttons and things. So I just kind of reverse engineered and I came with some wires that was all disconnected and messed up. And I just started kind of drawing a diagram of how I thought it would work and I just tested it and it does work. I'll show that in a minute. Basically you have three phase coming in there. This is the relay or solenoid contact or whatever you want to call it. You, if you have a, something like a flat blade screwdriver, you can manually activate this, stick a screwdriver in this particular model. There's a little slot there with a plastic thing. You stick that down and you can hear the mechanism. Start stop button in this part is a fuse element. There's three fuses there for the um, three phase and then you would have the motor or whatever connected out there. And then this is a reset button. I don't quite understand why they had the external reset button because I thought that was this was just like a thermal thing and it would be like a thermal fuse that reset was it resettable. But from my understanding of these these are like a thermal fuse. There's a thing of solder in there that mounts and you can kind of see a little cog there. And then when that solder mounts somehow that cog wheel spins and there's a little arm here. So if I pop that it'll trip. That arm raises up and that trips and it would then shut off. And then you'd have to reset it. You'd have to replace the element and reset it like that. And the kind of interesting thing I thought with this is that when that mechanism breaks, if, if those fuses blew, blow, one of those fuses blows, it would trip, then they, on, they all reset. But I think what they, because, why they did this is because it's three phase. One of these fuses can blow before the other ones. So to prevent like a short and you have like one fuse blows then the next one blows or something upstream blows. You would have the one fuse blows, it trips. And then there's a switch down here that's normally closed. Unless it's tripped then it opens. So this is in wired in series with the coil. So what would happen then is when the fuse blows, the power to the coil cuts out, the coil lifts, it de-energizes the load. And the way I had this wired and I I just figured it out, I just tested it. And it's a 220 coil on this model. Some of them are 24 volts, but this one's 220 I guess. So I have input power there, goes to the yellow. The yellow hooks onto this stop button, which is normally closed. So then the power would return on the red. The red then goes down here to this top screw. And this is a, another contact. This is like a satellite contact or either with the other one. So that when those things close, these contacts close, that closes too, even though that's not controlling the three phases. And that feeds in there. And then there's a black wire that goes to this over here to the start button. And basically the start button, because that contact up here is not is normally open, you can get the coil to energize it initially. You would push the start button, that would activate the coil, engage that contact, bypass the start button up here, hold that down. And then there's another wire over here that comes off, and I believe that goes up here to this thing for the fuse, like I just discussed. And that's where it's used as a coil, 
in the other side of the coil goes out and then goes down over here. That might not be exactly how it's wired, but something similar to that. So the coil's in between there. And the coil goes this wire off you know, the second terminal goes either to that switch over in the front or to the coil. And I just have a little transformer there because I didn't know if this would work, so I wanted to control this in a controlled environment. So I have a variac here so I can control the amperage and stuff. So.